All right, good morning, everyone. I'm here in the kitchen. I just woke up not too long ago and trying to figure out what to do for breakfast. I just finished boiling some water, however, and that means coffee. So let's do that, and then we'll figure out what to eat after we figure out uh, what to drink. There's the tea kettle. Got the Got the coffee grounds in there already. Look at this. Plop it right in there. Let that sit for a few minutes. Now about breakfast, I've been... I've been doing this for a while, but I can only eat soggy, cold stuff for breakfast for a while, and ideally I would make myself something warm and uh, nourishing over here on the stove, but it's hard to convince myself to make something on the stove because then every time I make something on the stove, it starts getting all dirty and like it starts like, uh, uh, it gets greasy and dirty. Uh, like, it, you know how you cook something on the stove and the, the little grease things go brrr, they splatter and splat everywhere, and it really discourages me from using the stove because then it, I'm, I'm, a, I'm imagining that it gets on the floor everywhere and over here on the counter everywhere, and it just really creeps me out and discourages me from cooking anything, just how dirty everything gets. And then I'm afraid that it's a, uh, attracting cockroaches, and I'm terrified of cockroaches. So I'm just gonna make a ham sandwich, actually turkey breast. Dave's Killer Bread. Get your mayonnaise. Your mustard, Grey Poupon. A little bit of horseradish in there. Put a little on one side, like so. Maybe a little bit more. Get some meat. Very thin provolone cheese. Two slices, like so. Then you pop this one over on top. There you go. Then you take a knife and uh, Cut it down the middle, like so. All right, and there's your little breakfast sandwich, or my breakfast sandwich. Just enough to get you through till lunchtime, uh, or whenever you're gonna eat next. Also, by this time, your coffee should be done steeping. So go ahead and push the little plunger down, very slowly and gradually, like so. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. All right, now I'm using a different mug here, but it's a little mug I bought on Etsy. Nice little pottery, okay. Actually, you know, I think I want to Here's the problem. I know I, I work myself into little holes because I've spoken over and over again about how much I drink just plain black coffee, you know, but this time I think I want to put a little bit of creamer in it. It's my life. I can half and half if I want to. I'll drink the next cup black, but some days you want to ease into the day a little more instead of belly flopping into it, right? See, that's, that's still okay. In fact, it's really good. All right, let's go draw. It's, I don't know what kind of intro this was, but thanks for hanging out. Wait, my sandwich.
All right, so if you couldn't tell, that sandwich did not end up tasting very good. I'm going to be real with you. Uh, I think, personally, it was the, the turkey breast. The white meat there is not really what I prefer. I prefer putting ham in my sandwich. See, ever since I was a young, a, a, a little boy, I preferred ham sandwiches. But somehow I've guilted myself into buying turkey breasts. Turkey, like turkey lunch meat, uh, somehow just by its sheer existence, I know that it, since it's white meat and it tastes worse, then it must be healthier, right? I get in this weird mental maze, and in the maze there are mental hurdles, and by the time I get to the end of it, I'm eating a sandwich that I enjoy less. But really, I think I should just go back to ham sandwiches. Sometimes in the past, I've also put lettuce on the sandwiches, iceberg lettuce, just to add a little bit extra crunch, but mm, a lot of the time I don't buy the iceberg lettuce just because uh, there's... I don't know, it doesn't last as long in the fridge as all the other ingredients. It's frustrating when one ingredient runs out much quicker than all the rest. The mayonnaise, the mustard, uh, the lunch meat, the cheese all last a pretty good amount of time. The bread, every now and then I don't finish a loaf of bread in time. It starts, you know, I notice a spot of mold on the bread. Uh, but usually it's just like the, the last few pieces. But the lettuce starts getting like... Ugh, that's like the worst feeling when you pull out some lettuce and it's like not crunchy anymore. And it's like soft and squishy. Mm. Anyways, um, anyone who wants to know about my uh, the 5K I recently ran, some people wanted to know, get, want an update about that. I posted some pictures on Instagram and Twitter. Here are some kind of paparazzi looking photos of me near the finish line. Yes, I did complete it. I ran the whole way. This, that lady was taking, taking photos of me as I ran up to the finish line. And I didn't, if I had known, okay, if I had known that she was going to send me, well, she didn't send me the pictures, but like the, through the website where I signed up, they like sent me the pictures somehow. I guess it was like tied to my like runner ID or whatever. Um, they sent me the pictures. If I had known that I was going to be sent the pictures later, I would have looked, tried to look a lot more dramatic, you know, put my arms out. I did put my arms out and my friend recorded me as I was crossing the actual finish line. So here's the main problem. She recorded me like 10 or 15 or 20 feet in front of the finish line. And I was still like buckling down mentally, uh, just kind of locked in trying to get to the finish line. And I wish she had backed up and got me as I was actually crossing the finish line, right? But she was, like, in front of it. I don't know why. Like, I, I wasn't ready yet to, to celebrate and look all victorious and stuff. And I had my my earphones in, listening to music, and I then I saw her saying something to me. Like, I think she was telling me to smile or something, and I, and I worked out, like, just, like, the, a, a little bit of a smirk or something. But they do kind of look like paparazzi photos, I, I admit. And I do kind of look look like Mark Zuckerberg a little bit. People have been commenting that a lot. The people, I, I get told that I look like Mark Zuckerberg lately and also Sam Smith, which, I don't know, I, I guess I've just been looking at myself for so much of my life that I don't really get. Like when people say I look like this or I look like that, it doesn't really ring true with me, but hey, if you see it, you see it. To me, I just look like me, I guess. When I was a lot younger in high school and stuff, I always, everyone, for like 10 years, people told me I looked like Napoleon Dynamite because I had much longer hair and I wore glasses and I breathed through my mouth, you know, so I really did that whole thing. I really, I, I even I will admit I looked a lot like Napoleon Dynamite. Anyways, no, the 5K went good. I, I, I trained a little bit. I, I went running a few times. I had been running. I, I hadn't ever run that far in my whole life until I went and did the 5K, though. The 5K is 3.11 miles. I had been running some around my neighborhood, but I had only been running like two and a half to three miles 
not even, I don't think I even ever got up to three miles. So, I mean, it was almost the same distance, but not quite. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like an insurmountable distance when I went to run the, run the 5k. And when I signed up with my friend, I knew I had to sign up with someone else. Otherwise the lack of like accountability, I knew I would back out the day of, and the day of the big race I still was so close to backing out. I was like, I woke up and I was like, oh, I was running through all these different excuses in my mind that I could like text my friend and be like, oh, I can't make it. You know, like even if it was just the simple excuse of I'm not going with no excuse, no ex explanation, or I don't feel like it, or I don't want to, or I think I'm coming down with something, which these days you can just be like, I think I'm coming down with something and that's you're good to go. And everyone's like, okay, don't come out, you know? Uh, but I was like, Hey, let's just do it. This is simple, easy. Just go out there. Worst case scenario, just walk the course, right? Just do it, Peter, just do it. So I went out there, I did it and I ran the whole way. I didn't walk at all. I'm pretty good at that, at, at not walking. I think I have some amount of endurance where I can just make myself not quit. Like to me, walking is quitting excuse me so i just even if i'm just jogging instead of running jogging pretty slow it to me that's still being engaged in the 5k right i can just keep going and uh, i finished it in 30 minutes uh which is just under like a 10 minute mile pace which is not fast but like i said not walking and i told myself like hey I gave myself like three weeks warning for this 5k and I like I'm not like a person that runs a lot but I was like hey okay so I have three weeks to train and at first I was pretty excited about it so I had been running like every day but then I kind of got look I don't like running I don't know I wish I liked running a lot of people out there seem to really like running but for me it's it's pretty torturous it's not enjoyable at all is there some do I just have to like keep doing it and at some point it'll start getting enjoyable? It'll start getting fun? Some people really seem to love it. Or is it just like a personality thing? Is it just a personal preference thing? So I practiced, I, I was in I was in training mode for about a week. Uh, and, and then after about a week, when I was about two weeks away from the 5K, I realized, oh no. I do hate running. And so then I stopped and I went into what I told myself was uh, power power saving mode where I was conserving my energy. It's like, so if I save my energy for two weeks, maybe, maybe that'll be good. A good way to prepare for the 5K, which of course is total nonsense. But I still ended up going out there and doing it. I still have my bike. I need to start riding that again. The problem, the annoying thing about biking is that I need to find a nice route, a nice little loop here through this neighborhood where I can ride my bike where I don't have to hit a bunch of stop signs. I think I could look at the map or something. I wonder if there's like some app for like mapping out bike rides where you always have the right of way and don't have to stop at stop signs or something. I mean, I know there are a lot of cyclists who don't stop at stop signs, but I don't want to be one of those cyclists who tries to take the best of both worlds of being a pedestrian and being a, a, a motor vehicle, you know, don't stop at stop signs, but they do ride on the road like a car and everyone, the pedestrians get mad at them and cars get mad at them and everyone, I don't know. It's just like, I don't want to be that kind of cyclist, but I think, I don't know, there's like a, there's like some golf courses several blocks away. Maybe I could just ride around those or something. I'm not sure. Maybe I just, maybe I just don't like exercise. You know what I should, maybe, maybe I should get one of those, um, just dance games. I've got a PS4. Would I need one of, uh, do I need like a sensor bar or something? I remember, I remember playing Just Dance at a friend's house years ago, and that that was good exercise. Also, maybe I would learn some dance moves. I don't know if it would really teach me good dance moves, but I do think it's good exercise.
and it's like playing a video game too, which I do enjoy. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. This drawing, look, lately someone asked about my um, mindset as I go into drawings, and lately, I don't know, I think it is healthy. Drawing has always been a way to kind of like vent for me, and lately drawing has been the the cathartic equivalent of screaming into my pillow. I've been like sc <laughs> screaming through my pen onto the paper. And I know that might sound a little scary or it might sound like uh, edgy or something, but I, I think art is a good way to, you know, like express yourself like that, you know, kind of like let it out, even if it doesn't look like anything or I don't know. I just like sit there and I just think about stuff and draw and just try to let all my frustration out onto the paper in the form of little squiggly lines and stuff like that. So I don't know if that makes any sense to you. Maybe you have something like that in your life. Maybe that's why some people go running to let out their frustration like that. Uh, but that's why I like drawing. Maybe I could figure out, maybe I could go running and maybe it's just, maybe it's a mindset thing. Maybe running can be cathartic for me in that way. I'm not sure. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Hope you have a good one and uh, I'll see you later. Okay. Okay. Bye. Oh yeah. Also in this video, a very rare treat, something for all those hundreds and thousands of viewers and uh, ravenous fans who sent in mail and email and messages um, asking, um, begging for more footage, um, specifically blurry, out-of-focus footage of the top of my head in these drawing videos. Hey, I got, I got some of that in this, in this video for you. Um, unfortunately, I did edit some of it out, but hey, I left a little bit of that in there in, in this video for you. I, to be honest, I, I was having some trouble with my camera tripod being a little bit wobbly and it was shaking a little bit. So then I, I resituated everything to try to have my, my camera be a little bit more stable. And in the midst of that, my camera angle changed a little bit to a point where, uh, well, I guess I, I didn't realize that it was recording a little bit more of the top of my head, but there you go. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. Bye.